Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. As we begin this Holy Week, I thought I would come here in our sacred space that's beloved by all of us and film my sermons here in this space. Um, this weekend, we celebrate Palm Passion Sunday. And so let my, the title of my sermon is Paradox and let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Paradox. When I was a young seminarian uh, and discovered the theology of Martin Luther, I was excited. His theology is all about paradox. Think about uh, the birth of Christ itself, the mystery and the miracle of the incarnation. It's all about paradox, holding together these two diametrically opposed things that should not both be possible at the same time, that we cannot grasp with our puny brains, but that our spirits, which are more expansive, can can glimpse the paradox of God made flesh. How can that be? The paradox of virgin birth. The paradox of Christ being fully divine and fully human. How is that possible? And as we enter this Holy Week and even this Palm Passion Sunday, Palm Passion Sunday is all about paradox itself. Christ, who enters the holy city of Jerusalem and is hailed as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, just uh, later in the cross we see God, the creator of the cosmos, emptying God's self in that kenosis, which means complete self-emptying, taking on this flesh and blood life like ours and emptying God's self of all God's power to show us the depths of God's love for this world, for us. Crucified and risen fullness and emptiness, creator of the cosmos, suffering servant, paradox. And yet, we who are people of faith um, know that this resonates with us more deeply than anything else. Uh, as we enter into Holy Week, this Palm Sunday, we begin our worship, in fact, with this joyful, jubilant, parade around the church with palms, right? And we're singing, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heavens. And yet, five days later, we cry out, crucify him, crucify him. And so on this one day, Palm Passion Sunday, we hear the the jubilation and the honoring of Christ as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And then as we read the passion of Christ, we hear about just days later, how he was betrayed by one of his closest friends with a kiss, sold for 30 pieces of silver, abandoned, uh, denied by Peter, right, and by all of his disciples, um, mocked, scorned, spit upon, beaten, whipped, abused, tortured, and killed. Paradox. And yet, when we really look at Holy Week, it speaks not just to the paradox that is God, but it speaks to the paradox that lives within us, within each of us. We see in the events of this Holy Week, when we look at the other characters in the story, we see, to paraphrase Dickens, 
the very best in us and the very worst in us. And so in these challenging days um, of this virtual Holy Week, um, of this frightening coronavirus, um, we've seen that human paradox, have we not? that this Holy Week speaks to so profoundly. We've seen the very best in people, and we've seen the very worst in people. And so I want to focus on five qualities, and I always start with the bad news, the worst in us, and I'll conclude with the very best, the good news, the best in us. So five things that we've seen um, in recent days that show the very worst in us. One, this isolation. I know we have to quarantine and we have to isolate, but many people I've heard things like, well, I was smart. I planned ahead. I have a big supply of food and, and toilet paper. I can survive. Me, mine, you know, we're all set. Um, and even we've heard this on the levels of different states. Well, those people in that state were not intelligent. Why should we help them? or nations, you know, as long as the U.S. is okay, like who cares about everyone else when sisters and brothers, there's not a corner of this planet that is not touched by this, by this virus. Second worst in us is ignorance. I work with college students and I love young adults, but man, when I watched the news and I saw them on spring break, drunk and in their bikinis, globbed in huge crowds of people saying, oh, this is all a big hoax. You know, why are all the bars closing? Uh, I was so discouraged. Um, think of others, not of yourselves at this time. Do, it's no time to be living in ignorance. Third, greed. We've, we've heard of the hoarding of toilet paper and the selling of of uh, sanitizer for exorbitant prices. Now is no time to uh, be hoarding and greedy at the expense of these important items for the health of others and well being of others. Fourth, fear and anxiety. Let's face it, we have all felt it, myself included. Um, but but let's not have it cause us to erupt into these outbursts with people who I've seen outbursts on social media, outbursts of people who cooped up in their homes together with their loved ones are starting to snap at each other. And it's not, it's anxiety and fear. It's not lack of love and care. So we can't let fear and anxiety get the best of us. And finally, despair. I was horrified to see that uh, gun shops were being considered an essential business at this time. Why on earth would we consider that an essential business if not falling into the depths of despair? Um, and, and then something that has brought me personally solace and, and comfort and strength at this time is walking on the on the beach with Ted and my dogs and now beaches and parks and walking trails are all closing because of some people have, have, um, you know, abused the precautions and not taken the precautions and now everyone has to suffer. So we've seen some of the worst in us in these past weeks, but I don't want to stay with that. Because this Holy Week, we see that. We see people torturing and abandoning and betraying and spitting upon the Christ. But we also see people anointing and being faithful and being brave. And that's what I want us to focus on, on this Holy Week. And so let's focus on the best in us um, as we're all, f to, to address the isolation factor, as we're all forced to isolate and quarantine and be either by ourselves or with our closest uh, members of our family, we realize how very deeply important our relationships are. 
and whether we have a couple people with us in our quarantine um, to just deeply appreciate the gift of them, or if we don't, to reach out by telephone or social media to let people know how deeply we love them and how very much our relationships mean. Instead of ignorance at this time, I've seen people become creative and think out of the box. Our own governor here in Rhode Island just announced that she's going to house those who are experiencing homelessness in hotels. What a brilliant idea. Many of you know I serve as the pastor of Church Beyond the Walls, which ministers to people experiencing homelessness. And maybe from times such as these, we'll even say, well, if we can house them during times of crisis, why can't we house them during regular, ordinary times? Um, in terms of greed and hoarding and selfishness, um, thanks be to God for those who are sacrificing of themselves for the sake of others. I'm so grateful to nurses and doctors and first responders and all those responsible for bringing food to our tables, farmers and truck drivers, supermarket personnel, um, all those who, who sacrifice themselves and their own well-being um, to bring us the things that we need to live at this time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In terms of counteracting the fear and the anxiety in us, I've also seen the very best. Um, I think our Native American sisters and brothers had it right when they spoke of the web of life, that we are all connected, that what we do to anyone or to any part of the web of life ultimately comes back and harms ourselves. Uh, I have a daughter in New York. I've been listening to Governor Cuomo say in these, in our nation, which was so polarized between Democrats and Republicans, he says, now is no time to be polarized, but to realize that we are one United States of America. But even in terms of other nations, sisters and brothers, we are one. Again, there's not a corner of this earth that is not touched by this virus. So we need to realize we are all one in this great web of life. And when a cure, when a vaccine comes for this coronavirus, we need to be sure that it crosses all barriers and boundaries and reaches every corner of this earth, all those affected. We are all one. And finally, in terms of despair, um, Martin Luther, uh, my brother in Christ, said that that was his greatest sin, despair. But he also said, if I knew the world were ending tomorrow, I would plant an apple tree today. Um, this morning, I gathered in a Zoom clergy meeting with my sisters and brothers in Christ, uh, Lutheran colleagues today, yesterday interfaith colleagues. But today, as I did the opening prayer, I, I really, I wept because I was so grateful for my brothers and sisters, my colleagues in this life of ministry. And one of my brothers in Christ, Mike Lemke, who had been a mili military chaplain for years, he said, when I was in Iraq, we said, we will come home someday, but it won't be today. And so sisters and brothers, in these challenging days, we know that we will get through this. There will be an end to this. It won't be today. But as this Holy Week shows, and as our African-American sisters and brothers say, it might be Friday, but Sunday's coming. Hold on to this paradoxical week. <laughs> In the midst of all these paradoxes, hold on to the faith, to, to the faith, and that life is stronger than death, and love is strongest of all. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.